talking about the Swachh Bharat Sess, and that has been a big disappointment at this point in time because it's on service tax and the service tax rate has gone up to 14.5%. The government, of course, has categorically stated that the money will go into the Swachh Bharat Kosh and will be used exactly for the purposes of sanitation and so on and so forth. You know, whether it was your government or this government, the Sess seems to be the easy way out as far as revenue yeah, generation is concerned. Yeah, but the wrong way out. I said it even when we were in government. Hmm. Cesses are not the way to raise taxes. Cesses are for an emergency, for an extraordinary situation, for a very urgent situation. So you impose a cess for a few months or so. But cesses have become a permanent part of our taxation structure. Mm. The answer is to change the rate. Why are you adding a cess? Change the rate. And every demand for money must come out of the general revenues. Mm. So do you believe that the, there is a case at this point in time, given the fact that we will probably see the GST come in for a higher service tax rate? No, once the GST comes in, that becomes a rate. If, if we don't see the GST coming in? Well, there will be popular opposition to a uh, higher service tax. See, people have not yet accepted that, uh, while well, people have accepted the concept of excise duty mm. on manufactured goods, they have not yet accepted the idea of a service tax on services. Mm. But we need to explain to people that service tax is no different from excise duty. But if excise duty rates are coming down and if service tax rates are going up, mm. it will uh, cause some opposition. Okay. Let's talk about the reforms that have been undertaken by this government. And some would argue that it's not Big Bang as Big Bang would have, uh, one would have expected. Some say it's incremental purposefulness. Some say that it's creative incrementalism and so on and so forth. Uh, at this point in time, what are the big missed opportunities? No, no. I'm not here to... Uh, to list uh, what the mm. government should have done. It's entirely for the government to decide what its priorities are. Mm. All I'm pointing out is I cannot see any overarching vision of reform. Mm. Uh, say, a la 1991 92. There was a clear vision of where we are going. Likewise, in 2004, well, not exactly in 2004, a little later, we had a clear idea of where we were taking this country over a period of five years. Mm. I don't see that from this government. Unless I see that vision, mm. uh, I but can't why, specify... Why don't, you see that, why don't you see that vision, sir? Because there is consistency, at least, in what the government is attempting to do. They, they want growth. Uh, they want fiscal consolidation. They want job creation. That's Maybe like a lot motherhood may, and apple pie. Sure, but, you know, they're, they're moving on the path of liberalization. They're trying to address the issue as far as uh, balance not, sheet repair is concerned. That's not ticket reform. Mm. Is big ticket large, reform possible today, of sir? Of course it's possible. You've got 282. Mm. If, we, if, if we had, if I had 282... But they don't have the numbers in the Rajya Sabha. Finance bills don't require the Rajya Sabha's support. A finance bill can be passed only in the Lok Sabha. Mm. And it doesn't matter what the Rajya Sabha does. Mm. It will lie in the Rajya Sabha for 14 days, and after that it is deemed to have been passed. Mm. So if I did not have 282 in all my three stints as finance minister, mm. 1996... 2004 and 2012. If only Dr. Manmohan Singh in, um, in 2004 had 282, we would have done more. Mm. The point is, with 282, you are not able to do the things that should be done. Mm. You can't get a GST passed, you can't get a DTC passed, and in non-economic matters, there are major things that can be done. You're not able to get your CCTNS, you've just approved it after killing funding for it for a whole year. Mm. You can't get your NCTC going, you can't get your NAT grid going. And I can think of many other things in many other areas. I think the 282, if you don't use the 282, it's a wasted opportunity. Mm. Uh, let me ask you, you know... Well, it's 281 as of yesterday. Well, let me, let me ask you this in terms of specifics, Mr. Chidamram. Uh, you know, at this point in time, a lot of the problems in terms of being able to see private investment pick up is a problem of stressed private sector balance sheets. And there is only so much that the government can attempt to do there. Now there is a proposal that the National Investment Infra Fund, which will be operationalized by the end of the year, could in fact look at alleviating some of the pain as far as stressed assets are concerned. But how do you really see private investment picking up till the problem of balance sheet repair is, is done? Is it so do it. You are the government. 
In fact, NPAs have increased, I read somewhere, by almost 17% over last year. Mm. You've been in government for 18 months. How long can you blame the previous government? You've been in government for 18 months and your tenure, if NPAs have increased by 17%. Mm. But it's largely on account of exposure of steel, aluminum it's and so also, on and so forth because of the commodity also, meltdown that we're seeing. due to the fact that many banks did not have chief executives yeah. for many months. Yeah, but they also wanted to overhaul that process. Did, of they, trying to, did they? No, they, they didn't. They have? No, they did they not. They have? Well, are you asking me questions or are you giving no, answers? No, sir, I'm saying that as part of the I'm answer, answering understand, that. Understand, yes. That's wrong. They announced that they're going to open it up. Hmm. They brought in two private sector bankers. Well, one of them was really private sector. One of them was ex-public sector. Hmm. And on the day they announced these two appointments, they also said the new experiment is being closed. We revert to the old system. Hmm. What kind of a policy is this? The old system allowed executive directors to become CMD and general managers to become executive directors. So just to make these two appointments, mm. you kept everything on hold for months, made the two appointments, and go back and look at your newspapers. On the same day, just as they announced these two appointments, mm. they said the new system is being closed today, we revert to the old system. Which means for a year and a half, your banks were headless, leadershipless, mm. and that may have contributed to the stressed situation of the banks. Okay. I want to ask you about the land acquisition bill because at this point in time, and you know, there is widespread criticism in the manner in which the government attempted to first promulgate the ordinance, re-promulgate it, and then finally has decided to do a U-turn as far as land is concerned. I don't know if it's going to be at all a priority in this session of Parliament or not. Uh, but the argument being made is that there is enough flexibility in the 2013 land law for states to deviate from the land law with presidential assent. What do you make of that argument? Let them, if a state has the courage to deny fair compensation, if the state has the courage to uh, uh, throw out environment impact assessment, uh, if the state wants to do that, let the state do it. I doubt if any state government can do what the central government could not do. Mm. So what, what, did we what did we stress? We stressed there should be fair compensation. We stressed there should be that environment impact assessment. Right. Right. Those were the points on which the land acquisition ordinance was opposed by the Congress party mm. and said, go back to the original act. Now, if, <coughs> you, if, the, if parliament and the central government uh, could not go through with their retrograde amendments. Mm. I doubt if any state government has the courage to go through the same retrograde amendments. But if a state wants to make a more progressive law, a law that is, leans more in favor of the farmer who is losing the land mm. rather than in favor of the industry or whatever who is getting the land, let the state go ahead with it. Mm. You know, we're a couple of months away from the next budget, sir. What is it that you would like to see as far as the budget is concerned? The GST is part of legislative agenda, but in the budget, what is it that you would like to see in order for the economy to really be given a fillip and a I don't know what the priorities of this government are. Mm. In my parting uh, interim budget, I laid out a 10-point mm. formula, which I said should be followed by the next government. Mm. I did not know at that time whether the next government would be Congress or BJP or anyone else. But I think that 10-point formula is a good road map for five years of a government. Mm. And I would like a government to largely adopt that 10-point program, improve upon it. I, I'm not saying I'm the last word on the subject, mm. but I think the 10-point program lays down a path in which a government can go. But haven't a lot of what you had said in that 10-point uh, uh, agenda, sir, uh, those, uh, those specific uh, points are being taken forward by this no, government? Fiscal so. consolidation, sticking to the path of fiscal consolidation? No, actually they have paused. They put it back the one year. Hmm. There's no reason to. With plummeting oil prices because and they, they, lower commodity they, they prices. They want to spend on infrastructure spending. They haven't done that either. But they have. The allocation for both roads, railways and railways has, has been improved from upon. Expenditure. Let's hmm. wait for the end of the year. Let's wait for the end of the year. Allocations are very different. I mean, any finance minister knows. Allocation is an easy job. Mm. It's a question of spending it mm. and getting the best uh, buck for their best bang for the buck is a difficult one. Point is, 
There is a 10-point program. If you adhere to it, I'm happy. Mm. If you're not able to adhere to it, I'm disappointed. If you follow a program that is antagonistic to it, then I will criticize you. Mm. Uh, on the recommendations of the Seventh Day Commission and the fiscal challenges that it is likely to pose uh, for the government, uh, at this point in time, uh, the, the view is that they should be able to mitigate the risk of any fiscal slippage. But given the experience with the Sixth Pay Commission, would this be a prime concern for you? No, Sixth Pay Commission did not cause any uh, impact, did not cause any adverse impact on the fiscal situation. Mm. The fiscal situation deteriorated only between 2009 and 2011. I don't think a pay commission has an impact. But I'd wait to see what is the ultimate number. I like to see that one number which costs the uh, pay commission report in terms of a percentage of the total expenditure. Mm. I'd like to see that number because it's a tapering effect. In the first year, the impact would be yeah. great, but it tapers down. Yeah. It tapers down. I'd like to see that number before I offer a final comment. But I, I don't think um, a pay commission uh, alters the balance very badly. But I have some reservation about the fact that the inequality between the lowest paid employee mm. and the highest paid government employee, I'm told, has increased rather than decreased. Mm. Now, all governments are at fault. And if this government, over 282 in the Lok Sabha, uh, did not have the courage or the capacity to keep their differential at least at the same level, mm. if not to reduce it, I'm disappointed. Mm. I think the differential must be kept to no more than 1 is to 10. Mm. Even 1 is to 10 is very generous in a country where there is a large number of poor people. But let's accept that in order to attract and retain talent you need a differential of 1 is to 10, mm. then I think the lowest paid employee and the highest paid employee should have 1 to 10. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us on Thank CNBC you. TV 18 and taking us through your assessment of the economic performance of the last 18 months and what we can expect in the winter session of Parliament. Thank With you. that, it is time for us to wrap up the CNBC TV 18 special. From all of us here, goodbye. Many thanks for watching.